All right. <clears throat> Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah. Wa man yudlilhu falahadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. So last time um, we, in Surah Al Imran, we were talking about the martyrs, those who have died in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. بَعْدَهُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Do not consider those who have died in the path of Allah as they have died. But indeed, they are alive, and they are extremely, extremely happy, and they're, and they're longing that their, that their companions join them. They they want them to come to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Why are they wanting their companions on Earth to join them, join, uh, them. Uh, join them with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? This is because they are, they are getting so many rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're extremely happy. They're at peace. They feel it is wonderful and absolutely beautiful and nothing can compare what they're feeling with what they were feeling in the dunya. So they want everybody else to join them as well and they're waiting for them. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we ended at, I believe, yastabshiruna bi ni'mati min allahi wa fadlin. And they are rejoicing at the blessings, at the bliss that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the bounties that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has provided them. Wa anna Allah la yudhiru ajr al mu'minin, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala does not ever waste the reward of the believers. Which means, whatever you do, however little it may be, uh, you will definitely reap the rewards. It will never go to waste, even if you did something wrong, but you had a good niya. Behind it, you will still earn the reward. And just imagine the reward of having to die in the in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Whatever that cause may be, it could be a war, it could be you going out on dawah, or you trying to do anything that uh, you are seeking Allah's reward for. Okay, uh, saving somebody's life, whatever it may be. Um, just one fiqh note. Uh, there is a little bit of a conflict between uh, opinions on what should we do with the bodies of the martyr. So pretty much all the schools agreed that those who uh, die on the battlefield, you don't give them ghusl, you don't wash their bodies, you just bury them as they are in their clothes, the way they're bloodied, uh, may Allah have uh, mercy on them, uh, and you just bury them just like that. Um, this is what was done in the Battle of Uhud as well. Um, but uh, if somebody is martyred um, and differently, you know, uh, there's uh, one one majority says that you can wash their bodies and bury them. But this goes back to the same thing where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Do not consider those who have died in the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as martyrs." One a little tip for you: um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us many, 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 many reasons to, or many, many opportunities to earn rewards. As simple as, let me just tell you, like even if you a pin pricks you and you feel pain, that you get a reward for. You get a reward for feeling a pin prick. So imagine going through the hardships that we endure in this life, et cetera, what kind of reward there may be. The reward is only going, you're only going to be eligible for the reward if you don't, if you do, if you show patience that, okay, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to show patience for whatever pain is being inflicted upon me. But if you complain and you're ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have a why me attitude, then you may not be eligible for the rewards. Where I was getting to is, where was I getting to? I, for, I lost my train of thought. Um, 
I lost my train of thought. It's okay. It might come to me later on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never uh, wastes any reward for, um, even if you prayed in the wrong direction, for example, and you thought that was correct, um, you will get the reward for your salah. Okay. Uh, for example, um, it was a very, very similar ayah where when, um, when the Qibla changed in Mecca, in, in the early, uh, in not Mecca, when the Qibla changed in Medina, when the Muslims, they migrated to Medina, um, early in the Medina, remember they used to pray facing Jerusalem, Quds, right? They used to pray, pray toward Quds, uh, the Masjid al, Masjid al Aqsa. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that they all turn, turn their faces to Kaaba. So a lot of the companions of Rasulullah, they came to Rasulullah questioning him is like, were our previous prayers accepted? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayahs that yes, your, your iman is never going to go to waste. Um, iman as in your know, salah and whatever you're doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never going to go to waste. Okay. Now, um, continuing with the, uh, with the scenes of Uhud, um, and they're going to be ending soon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ Those who responded to uh, Allah and his messenger after calamity hit them. So what happened in, <clears throat> after the battle of Uhud, okay, after the battle of Uhud, um, the Muslims, they came, came back to Medina. But then news came that the mushrikeen, they're still trying to gather up against the Muslims. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah commanded to, and Allah, Allah told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, to go back and fight and be ready for, to fight those who are the mushrikeen that are coming back at, even after the battle. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gather, gathered up to, it is said, 70 or so um, uh, select people. Some of them were participants in the Battle of Uhud, and you know some of them stayed behind, right? They did not go. And uh, it's some of them, they were, they, were, they were feeling very, very regretful. So they joined in that party. Wallahu alam. And they went and nothing happened to them. The, the mushrikun got really scared that, Look at these guys. Even after we've killed so many of them, they are still strong and they are willing to fight and they ran away. Okay, this is after the battle of Uhud uh, that, that happened. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them. Allah is saying that those who responded to Allah and his messenger, even after calamity had struck them at the battle of Uhud, لِلَّذِينَ ahsanu. And for those who show excellence, minhum, from, from among them, what taqaw, and they, and they were fearful, fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ajrun azim, for them is a great reward. Alladina qala lahumun nas, and some people called them, told them, don't go, don't go. Okay? Alladina qala lahumun nas, lakum, that there are people gathering against you. Don't go. They are going to attack you again. Don't go. There were some people who were telling them not to go. Fakhshawhum. Then fear them. You know, don't go. You, you lose your life. Fear them. They're, they're gathering against, against you again. But instead, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them and saying, Fazadahum imana. Instead of getting scared, those people who had good iman, their iman increased that the, the other people are telling him, no, the people are gathering against you and those who are willing to fight in the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially following the command of Rasulullah, Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their iman increased. وَقَالُوا And they said, حَسْبُنَ Allah. They said, Allah is enough for us. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And he is the best of the wukala, the, the guardians, and he's the best of wakils. You follow? So people are telling them to stop, but they are not fearful because they want to obey the command of Allah uh, and his messenger. And then it increases their iman that look, all of these people are scared and we are not scared because we are, have tr our trust in Allah and we will go and we will fight and Allah is sufficient for us. 
and he's the best of protectors and he's the best of the guardians and he will protect us. What a beautiful Iman, okay? This is a very, very famous uh, phrase, by the way. You must have heard of it before. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. It is often followed by ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir. Um, that second part will also come later on in the Quran. Have you heard this before? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Whenever you feel scared, and, but you still want to put, put your trust in Allah, this is, this is a dua that you can recite. Hasbunallah, Allah is sufficient for us. Wa wakil, and he's the best of protectors. And then they return back uh, 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 with the favor of Allah and his bounty. Lam yamsas hum su and harm did not touch them. So those people who, who, whose in, iman increased, they went forth anyway to meet the mushrikeen. The mushrikeen got scared and ran away, but they came back victorious, feeling, feeling, uh, feeling, blessed, feeling blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no harm touched them. Allah, And they followed the good pleasure of Allah, which means they sought the pleasure of Allah was pleased with them. Wallahu dhu fadlin azim, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all bounties. Innama dhalikum shaytan. It is indeed shaytan yukhawifu awliya'ah. It is shaytan indeed who scares, who puts fear in the heart of the walis of Allah, the, the one who are close to Allah. So those who are closest to Allah, shaytan, um, uh, in, uh, is shaitan is uh, wants to weaken their iman even more so. Those who already have weak iman, shaitan doesn't bother them very much. It's like, ah, these guys are already astray, it's fine. You know, uh, they're already misguided. I don't need to have to work hard on them. But those who whose iman is strong and they want to follow the right path, Shaitan is after them, attacking them, trying to weaken them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah says, Innama dhalik awliya. It is indeed shaitan who is who who tries to put fear in the hearts of the allies of Allah. Awliya are the ally of Allah. Fala but don't be afraid of them, is in the disbelievers. Fala don't be scared of them. Wahafuni and but fear me. In kuntu mu'minin, if you are indeed believers and you put your trust in me. وَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ الَّذِينَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْكُفْرِ And uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Rasulullah and uh, along with him the companions that don't grieve, don't feel depressed that, the, the, uh, that there are people who are racing toward disbelief. They're rushing toward disbelief. Meaning, um, don't be... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was not fighting them for the sake of fighting them because they're disbelievers. Okay, the first of all, that he was trying to protect them. But he's feeling at the same time sad because this is his ummah. This is his ummah that he's fighting. He doesn't want to fight them. He wants them to convert to Islam. So he is very depressed that look at these people. They're rushing towards kufr. And I want them to convert to Iman because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is rahmatul lil alameen. He's a mercy for mankind. He wants everybody to be guided toward the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's feeling ultra depressed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ الَّذِينَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْكُفْرُ Don't grieve for, the, for those people who, is rush, who are rushing towards disbelief. إِنَّهُمْ لَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا They will never be able to harm Allah. Meaning, even if they don't convert, it doesn't hurt Allah that they didn't convert. The, uh, the, the, uh, the will of Allah will definitely uh, take place. Meaning whatever Allah decides will happen. Whether you feel that these people are going to convert to Islam or not, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to spread no matter whether, whether the, the people that you're trying to preach to they're still disbelievers. The will of Allah will be done. Okay? They will not be able to hurt Allah in any way if they are not believing. Yuridullahu 
ألا يجعل لهم حظا في الآخرة Allah wills that they will not get any portion of the hereafter. They might find victory, momentary, momentary victory, momentary uh, successes in this dunya, but they will have no share in the hereafter. And they will have a great torment, a great punishment. Those who have made a trade of uh, uh, disbelief with, uh, as opposed to belief, and we've talked about this several times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this a trade, right? They will never be able to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And for them will be a painful punishment. It's essentially uh, uh, talked about twice. وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ And don't ever think, and don't let yourself not think that those we are get, giving respite to, meaning we're leaving them alone, they're doing bad things, these, these kuffar, these are, they're doing bad things in this world, they're, they're sowing corruption in this dunya. Don't think that if nothing is happening to them, and, and that we're leaving them alone, it is good for them. Don't ever let them think that it's good for them. In numli lahum liyazdadu ifma. We are only letting them be and letting them letting them go and not um, and not holding them to account because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liyazdadu ifma, so that they may grow in their sins. Allah is show gives the corrupt people respite. You know, in this life, we often feel like this person is so bad, yet he continues to continue to do bad, continue to sow corruption, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hold him to account. Well, this is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this example. Allah is saying, I am only letting them go because I want them to increase in their sins. Okay? لِيَزْدَادُ إِثْمَا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ and for them will be a humiliating punishment. Wow, three times. A terrible punishment, uh, a, a painful punishment, and a humiliating punishment. مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never leave the disbelievers in the state that they're in right now. That is state of weakness, a state of, state of hurt, and state of fear. Allah is saying, Allah will never leave the, the, the believers in a state until he is able to distinguish, not able to, until the filthy is distinguished from the good, from the pure. The filthy is distinguished from the pure. Basically, this ayah means um, that Allah will continue to test the iman of the believers. So if you believe in Allah and if you're closer to Allah, shaitan is going to come attack you. Your iman is going to be continue to be tested because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests highly the actual believers until Allah is saying is the reason is so that the pure believers are distinguished from the impure, the filthy. Okay. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُطْلِعَكُمْ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ And Allah will never show you the unseen, meaning Allah will never tell you the future. Okay. He will continue to keep you guessing as part of your test. Okay. Am I, uh, is Allah going to reward me for this? And you, you, you will continue to doubt because that will be a test of your iman. Uh, well, but Allah chooses from his messengers whom he wills. Meaning, there's a messenger among you. You, your job, O oh, companions of Rasulullah, is not to second guess the messenger. There is a reason the messenger is with you. Follow him. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُولِهِ Then continue to believe in Allah and His messengers. وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا And if you believe, 
and if you fear and you protect yourself from the anger of Allah, falakum ajrun alim, then you will have an amazing reward. And don't let and don't think that those who are miser after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them from his bounties, money, riches, power, control, don't think that huwa khayra lahum, that it is good for them because Allah likes them. This is why they're rich. Allah doesn't like these people because they're poor. Okay, this is the actual Christian mentality. These people are poor, Allah doesn't like them, right? You just have to work hard. You don't work hard, you're lazy. Or you are rich, then you're successful. You're successful, Allah loves you because you're successful and Allah is showing you all this grace because Allah is saying, do not think that those who don't have much or those who have a lot, that it is good for them if they have a lot. No, it is bad for them because once you have more, more is expected from you in the, in, the, uh, in the sight of Allah. You are supposed to be giving more. You are supposed to be doing more because it wasn't that money was not yours to begin with. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wealth that he granted it to you. So it's actually bad for you that you are rich. It is actually bad for you because your tests, you're going to be tested even more severely. Okay, and their uh, whatever they were miser with, meaning their wealth and their money and their power, it's going to be hung around their neck on the day of judgment. But all of the inheritance, everything, uh, the heritage and the dominion belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people think that. Um, they have worked hard and it is because of their hard work that they are getting all this money. It was granted to them by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah saying it wasn't theirs to begin with. I owned it. And to Allah belongs all of the heritage. The money in your wallet that you give for zakah, for, for sadaqah or zakah, it wasn't your money to begin with. It was given to you. You are asked to give a portion of it back. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir and Allah is all aware of what you do. Switching topics now. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now talking about the people of the book. In the same vein. Now, basically, as you can see, the topic is switching to uh, wealth and, and, and charity, right? You saw how the topic switched from wealth to charity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now showing an example. لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيهُ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَا That Allah had heard, has heard those uh, of uh, those who have said that Allah is poor and we are the rich people. Meaning, the this is, uh, in, in the Mufassirun tell us that this is about the the people of the book that uh, they were told to give charity. So they were poking fun at the commandment of charity, of zakah, of sadaqah. And they were saying, oh, Allah needs money because he's poor. And we are the one with money. We are the rich people. And Allah is poor because he needs money. So he's asking for money. He's asking for charity. So Allah says, I have heard those people who say, that Allah is poor and, and we indeed are rich. We will record what they have said. We have record, we will record it down what they have said. And the fact that they had killed the prophets. These are the Jews. Allah will write their write what they said down into his record. And the fact that they killed the uh, the prophets as well without any due cause, meaning unjustly, and we will say to them, taste the burning torment of the fire. Taste the blaze of the fire, meaning they will enter into hellfire. This is because 
it is because of what they have committed, what they have done. And Allah is never unjust to his servants, to his slaves. Meaning, Allah, whatever they did, it was out of their own free will and choices. And Allah does not, is never unjust to his slaves. We already know. Even if you do the smallest of uh, good deeds with iman and patience, you will get rewarded for it. And you, uh, you will surely be punished for your um, arrogance and rejection. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَهِدَ إِلَيْنَا أَلَّا نُؤْمِنَ لِرَسُولٍ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَنَا بِقُرْبَالٍ تَأْكُلُهُ تَأْكُلُهُ النَّارِ Okay. There are people, uh, there, there is a, uh, there was a, a thing, a, a particular ritual that was, that was done, either, it, either in fact it was done or it was, uh, something that was uh, uh, told that was done. What was done? That the, a sacrifice used to be brought to, this is at the time of the Jews before Isa alayhi salam, at the time of the, so sacrifice used to be brought to, to the prophet and, and that, that sacrifice used to be burnt. Um, and then uh, basically the, the fire would eat that sacrifice, whatever that ritual was, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that now these Jews that are in Medina, they're coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are able to do this, do this, that somehow magically a fire, you put the sacrifice in and a fire comes from the sky and eats up the sacrifice. If you're able to do this in front of us, basically show us this miracle. They're saying, show us a miracle. Okay. They, uh, uh, they're telling Rasulullah, show us this kind of miracle where you put the sacrifice and a fire comes from the sky and eats it up. We will believe in you. Okay? Qul, then Allah is telling Rasulullah, tell them, Qad ja'akum rusulun min qabli. But the prophets came before me too to you. Bil bayinat, with clear signs and with miraculous signs. Wa bil ladhi qultum. And, and with what you are saying. Basically, Allah is saying is that, yes, indeed, there was a sacrifice and whatever you're saying, you put the sacrifice, a fire comes and then eats up the sacrifice. Whatever you're saying, that, that was happening in front of you. Then why did you kill those prophets? You didn't believe in them. If you're telling me that show me a miracle and I'll believe in you, miracles were done before. And the prophets were doing these miracles, but you killed them anyway. Then why did you kill them? In kuntum sadiqin, if you are indeed truthful. فَإِنْ كَذَّبُوكَ Okay? And if they reject you, if they have rejected you, O Rasulullah, فَقَدْ كُذِّبَ رُسُلٌ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Then they also rejected people before you. Oh, so Rasulullah continues to feel sad that these people are not believing in me. They're not believing that I'm the messenger of Allah. And I have seen uh, this, this is the truth. And I believe in this. And I want everybody else to believe in Allah and his commandments. And they're not believing. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is sad, but Allah is telling them, telling him, فَإِنْ كَذَّبُوكَ If they have rejected you, then don't worry. They have rejected uh, many prophets before you. Min qablika ja'u bil They came with miraculous signs. Was zubur and scriptures. They came with clear signs and they came with scriptures. Wal kitab and books. Al munir, illuminating books. But they killed them anyway. They belied them uh, anyway. Uh, let's stop here. Then the topic switches slightly. <laughs>